be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise, make us to love that which thou dost command. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the epistle of blessed Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, beginning at the 25th verse. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be also tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, 
and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Here of the epistle. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Gospel is written in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
morning to all on this 14th Sunday after Trinity. A special welcome to our visitors. And of course, we've got a number of people away, as you can see. I've counted up here 14 uh, who are obviously out having fun on this long weekend or perhaps not feeling well, so we keep them in our prayers. The, uh, you're invited, of course, downstairs. We now have, of course, on our first, uh, first Sunday in September, our fellowship and refreshments return downstairs. There's lots of goodies down there. Please note that I will be leaving for South Africa on Tuesday for the consecration of Canon Smuts as Bishop Suffragan for the Diocese of Pretoria in South Africa. Uh, actually, that's a bishop adjutor, co-adjutor. I'll return home on the 12th, so please pray for me and for Bishop Bottero, who will be traveling with me as co-consecrator, that we may have safe travels and a safe return home. The Holy Mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God in prayer that God may bless and prosper all who labor in the industries of our land and grant to our farmers, fishermen, and gardeners a bountiful harvest. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for the traditional Anglican Church in Latin America, for the region of Guatemala, for their suffragan bishop, Bishop Juan Sain Lobos, his clergy and people. And we pray too for Canon Stephen Smuts to be consecrated, as I said, a bishop in the church and the Bishop Co. Judah for the Diocese of Pretoria in Southern Africa next Saturday, that God may bless, guide, and sustain him in his Episcopal ministry. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, the dying, commended God's mercy and care, Bob Leesk, for Peggy, I take it. Well, welcome back. Sorry, Will. Welcome back from the wilds of Florida. Um, is she doing reasonably well? No. Oh, all right. Well, we'll hear about that later if we may. All right. Well, we, we keep her in our prayers. For Drew, for Marianne, for Ernie, Gary, Peggy, Suzanne, Susan Nickel, Rundell, Judy, Tony, Margaret Jansen, Cindy Lass, Blo Blaine, Bebo, Mackenzie, and all who have desired our prayers, unworthy as we are. We pray for our schools, colleges, and universities as they begin their new academic year this week, that God, the fountain of all wisdom and knowledge, may bless and guide all who teach and all who learn. We continue our prayers for peace in the world, particularly in the Middle East and in Ukraine, and the many places of armed conflict. We pray for the men and women of His Majesty's Canadian Forces serving home and abroad, for the men and women who serve as police officers, first responders, health care professionals, that God may bless and watch over them and their families. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers to the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially Hilda Littner, Earl Gillespie, Peter Downs, Herb Jansen, and all whose years bind occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. Amen. May they rest in peace. Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ten were healed, one was saved. What do we come to know? about the ten lepers in our gospel narrative for this morning, we actually learn quite a bit. First, they knew their place. We read in verse 12, they stood afar off for they were lepers. Secondly, they didn't over ask from verse 13, Lord, have mercy on us. Thirdly, they respected Jesus. They called him master. Fourthly, they obeyed Jesus by immediately heading to the priest to show that they had been healed, which is part of the Levitical law. And fifthly, they had faith, because they understood the healing process commanded by God in Leviticus 13. That is what we know. But what else does the gospel tell us? It reveals to us God's active grace and God's expectations for us. When only one of the healed lepers returned to give thanks, Jesus asked, were there not ten cleansed? We are called to thankfulness for God's mercy. We should never take God's mercy or grace for granted in our lives. 
It is not just a matter of good manners to say thank you. It is a matter of heartfelt gratitude. We also learn, if we didn't already know, that in addition to gratitude and obedience, we are called to be accountable to God for our words, our actions, and our prayers. Jesus asked, where are the other nine? Jesus' query as to where the other nine were is not some self-centered query on his part, as if Jesus was personally hurt or offended. No, it is about an attitude of ingratitude. It is a lack of accountability. It is a matter of indifference. Gratitude, thanksgiving, accountability. Each of these are part of our spiritual development, part of our progress before, before the life of perfection set to us, which Jesus calls each of his disciples to. In turn, gratitude, thanksgiving, accountability, these strengthen our spiritual lives. They enhance our everyday living. Giving thanks heals us. Being accountable helps us to grow. We move beyond ourself. We look to others. Worries diminish. Problems are shared. Peace is invited into our hearts and our minds. Anger diminishes. Happiness can take the place of complaint and bitterness. Christian joy is fostered. In pointing out the example of the Samaritan, who of course is a stranger, he's not part of Israel. He came back and he gave thanks. And in his asking about the other nine, Jesus points out a character flaw, one which we must be careful to avoid. There was a gratitude gap, an accountability gap, a failure to acknowledge the place the providence, the action, and grace of God in the character of those nine who did not return. It is said good character is habitually doing the right thing in the right way for the right purpose. We could say the same of Christian discipleship. Our collect for this Sunday puts into words this prayer of gratitude and accountability. For we prayed, Almighty, everlasting God, Give us the increase of faith, hope, and charity. And that we may obtain which thou dost promise, make us love that which thou dost command. God gives us grace. God gives us the gift of faith. God calls us to love as he loves us. As with the lepers calling out to Jesus for mercy, God too answers our plea. He answers it with forgiveness, pardon, and healing. Which leads us to ask of ourselves, what is our response in the circumstances of our lives? What is our attitude in the face of God's love and mercy? Is it that of the stranger who turned back and gave thanks to Jesus? Or is it that of the nine, simply eager to get on with their lives? Our words, our actions, speak to our character. It speaks to the character of ourselves as Christian disciples. In our own time, Jesus may well pose the question, and where are they for whom I gave my life? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. The angel of the Lord carrieth round about them that fear him, and he delivereth them.
Brother, and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. Lord, receive the sacrifice of thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both of our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. We pray thee, O Lord, to look down in mercy on thy people and on the oblation which they offer unto thee, that being thereby rendered acceptable in thy sight, we may obtain of thee the remission of all our sins and the effectual fulfillment of all our desires. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Charles our King, and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me cart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chiefly the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow the good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> you that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We the of the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things whom with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit we confess as one God, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. For that which we believe of thy glory, O Father, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and at institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he prayed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, Remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving 
most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The rest of the world receives thee from the spouse present of the covenant of intercession, thus close to the Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With thy blessed apostle Peter, Paul, and the Lord, the saints, for the grant of some of these, that by the help of thine love and mercy, both be free from sins and saved from all these days. In the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace <laughs> of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit.
Christ, which were shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul of everlasting life. Amen. <coughs>
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, who has fed us with thy heavenly sacraments, Grant, we pray thee, that we may thereby grow and increase toward the attainment of everlasting salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth forevermore. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.